Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to another YouTube uh, video. Um, today we're going to be diving into chapter 1024 of One Piece, but specifically the actual important part, which is Yamato's uh, flashback, second flashback. It's really odd that the character's gotten two. I'm kind of waiting for flashback number three at this point. Um, but I just feel like the rest of the chapter just eh, didn't really do a lot for me. You know, visually, it was pretty cool seeing Kaido and Yama. Yamo fight. Uh, I love having that nickname of Yamo now. There's a really cool uh, scene with like blood, like spat, like it's like it's splat, and then like Yama tries to, Yamo tries to like use this arrow, and then Kaido's like nah, and like does the same thing in blocks. So that was cool. Um, we also got kind of a pretty big news that uh, in the Vivri that she is a woman. Thank God <laughs> that was cleared up. Um, Never once did I think that Yamato was a man um, because she was just cosplaying as, as Odin. And this gets brought up in this um, um, chapter a lot is that this whole concept of not being a man but being uh, being your idol, wanting to be very close to your idol, uh, having respect for somebody that um, did a lot more in self-sacrifice and that kind of stuff. Self-sacrifice is another big theme in this chapter too. Um so right off the bat, you know, her relationship with Kaido is very rocky, um, not as a pun intended uh, with the whole Onigashima kind of landscape, but uh, first off, we saw that she's able to use Conqueror's Hockey right after Odin's death, you know, you know, 20 years after his death, and, you know, Kaido beat her apparently and said, like, if you're going to be Odin, then I'm going to have to kill you, which I don't think he, like, legitimately 100% means like this. I think he means more like... If, if you choose to be the, the kind of person Odin was and try to lead these people and try to have freedom and, and you know, have your own wings and fly off this island, then I'm going to have to kill you. Um, it's a little bit different than what he's actually saying. Um, but anyways, uh, I digress. The fact that she's able to use Conqueror's Hockey kind of leads me to believe that she's going to stay on Wano too. Um, but it does kind of also show me as a character that she has this, like, I don't have any restrictions, you know, I want to be free and I want to see every island kind of vibe. Um, it's a very different Conqueror's Hockey, but it is a very strong enough goal that makes sense, um, to have. Um, in the previous flashback we saw with Yamato with the whole Ace thing, uh, we saw this deep-seated resentment for Kaido as a father figure, um, and how they kind of bonded over that, and uh, the fact that, you know, Ace actually respected this person in Odin's journal, even though he didn't know it was his father, but, you know, all that complicated stuff with not knowing his father, his actual, what his actual father was, um, is kind of one of those really interesting scenes, because, you know, Yamato, you know, I don't think she has seen Kaido, uh, maybe ever in, in, a, in a light like Ace maybe has was able to see indirectly. Um, and it, it, it's, I, I think Kaido, Kaido himself was, grew up that way as maybe an Oni, you know, maybe his race of Oni believed in, you know, supremacy of law or like, every, like you have to fight and there only can be one person at the top and whoever is physically the strongest is the only one that can stay alive. Maybe rocks told him that or something. You know, something had to have happened where Kaido had to have this thinking, and now he's drilling it and trying to drill it into, you know, the daughter's head where he's like, no, no, no. Like, and you could tell the reason that he calls Kai, uh, Yamato, you know, his son isn't because he's like, oh, I respect, you know, this person's, you know, idea to be Odin. No, it's because I think he always wanted a son, and he always wanted her to be strong, but, you know, he couldn't didn't believe her to be strong if she was a woman maybe some some something of that nature um it, it's definitely pretty interesting how Kaido just focused so much on strength alone i think this is why he's not very a popular character in the uh, world polls is because he's just so oriented on one portion of one dynamic um anyways um when she gets locked in this cave um, you know, she gets a lot, you know, tied up with this talisman, like, kind of, a rope. Uh, it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of, you know, stories about someone getting locked in a cave, you know, 
I mean, there was, of course, you know, religiously, there's a, there was a couple of instances where somebody's been, you know, risen out of a cave and been totally different. But obviously, there's, you know, I'm I'm certain that there's somewhere there's a samurai story of someone being locked in a cave and being a lot stronger. Um, and she meets these samurai. One of my favorite moments of maybe of all Wano. <laughs> Seriously, this is a very understated moment. This guy looks so much like Zoro's, um, you know, lineage. I think it's it definitely has to be Ushimaru. Love how he throws his sword, and it's very similar to how Zoro cuts that rock on um, uh, Alabasta when he cuts Mister. You know, he cuts down Mister One. How it's like he's using Ryu because he just cuts that chain so easily. But I just love how Yamato's like, well, if if these people think that you know I'm Kaido's, you know. Um, son, then I'm gonna get cut down. I'm, I'm gonna get killed right here and now. And instead, they're like, "Samurai don't need food," and they like give her the food and they cut the. And it's like, oh man, like Yamato is one of these characters where you just kind of feel for the character to some degree, where you just want to give the character a hug and just be like, oh man, like you've you've been through quite a lot of trauma uh, for an eight year old. You know, we don't, uh, you know, can't you know, keep forgetting that she's eight years old. Um, so it's pretty interesting, you know, some of the dialogue here, you know, it's like, you know, like this, you know, samurai, they, they, you know, I'm just, I'm a certain somebody, you know, I'm not anybody important, you know, I've lost the right to be called this because I've, you know, been defeated. Uh, and then he does this, like, he takes off his, like, he derobes the top of it later on. They have this bond and she doesn't know how to read and it's just really adorable how they teach her how to read. And I don't know how she got Odin's journal still, so that's kind of a mystery. Um, I wonder if maybe um, uh, Tengu Yama actually gave Yamato the journal for some reason. Um, I don't know why he would have it either, but it would be pretty interesting. Uh, Yamato, uh, all, it's like kind of like these three dudes have like definitely, these three samurai I think used to be the daimyo. Um, and I, I love how they have it's just respect for one another and they're like hey look you know we we respected odin too um we really did uh you know we were just infatuated with the man that was odin the very charismatic man and they're like and she's like oh wow you know people were actually you know they had this very uncle like energy uh so it's really adorable to see them you know have this bond and and I love how, uh, I think it's, I pretty, sh I'm, I'm just going to call him Ushimaru because that's what he just makes me think of. I don't know if he is, but I just love how he just breaks the cave down. Also, you know, by the way, on his, on the tattoo on his back is the same tattoo in the dojo that Zoro grew up in. So there's some definite Shimotsuki, um, connections there. But I just love how, like, Zoro, go or <laughs> Zoro, that's how much this guy reminds me of him. He goes, breaks after he breaks out of the cave, and he's like, with the other two samurai, he's like, you know, for 20 years from us, it's quite a long time, you know, for the raid. You know, the the prophecy that Toki was talking about is what, he, is what he's mentioning. He's like, but, you know, you know, I think he's going to, I think the three of them are going to try to fight, you know, Kaido. They, they tried to fight Kaido anyways, in order to just have Yamato, you know, maybe just have her have some time to where she can someday hold Kaido off, right? And I just love, love the contrast that right after that, we, we see the panel blend with the black black background, you know, for the flashback go into white, and we just see her finally be able to, you know, counter him with a Thunder Bagua. And I was like, yes, yes, this is, ah, like, this character. Like, Yamato for me is a character that sometimes like i'm not like eh, i'm just like you know i don't understand i don't understand the hype for this character other times i'm like yes like mo chapters like this is, is really why um you know oda does such a great job with characterization you know because when we first see his character i was like i don't know you know the whole chains aesthetic you know is that gonna be you know is this you know what what kind of character is this gonna be and and now we're seeing it in full bloom um, she gets called an Oni princess, uh, I, at first when they said Oni, Oni Hime, I, I, th I thought, oh, or Hime, like, I read that, like, totally like an idiot, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, uh, you know, that's why in Bleach they called her that, uh, anyways, I, I think that Oni, uh, princess line definitely has something to do with maybe, I love how even though she has 
this connection to like the ruler of Wano with Kaido. Uh, she she lives in a decent place, you know, supposedly. Um, she has the similar same problems as a lot of the other uh, Wano citizens of just being an average show that is starving just the same way. Um, you know, she's getting beaten the same way, you know, she's getting locked in these, you know, so it's just like, wow, you know, you, you know, so Kaido really holds nothing back on anyone, whether you're his kin or not. I still don't know if Yamato is his actual, you know, flesh and blood. It'd be interesting if it was, but I'm kind of leaning towards maybe not. Um, so I, I think this, this concept of starving has been brought up a lot of times in Wano, but it's just such a powerful thing. It's because, like, food is something that we all need and, you know, we have to have. And it just shows this, like isolation between you know uh, a parent and a child like this and it's really pretty cool stuff you know of course i read too much and stuff like this but i just absolutely adore their relationship uh maybe not you know the concept of their relationship being shown more kind of personality being shown more a uh, little bit a little bit <laughs> anyways uh, I I just really like this character of Yamato and uh, even though there's been a lot more evidence now that she might not join the crew uh, I would just absolutely be fascinated with seeing this character more and uh, anyways uh, that was my uh, uh, breakdown of that flashback um, also Yamato got featured for the first time in the anime uh, this last night and it was a really cool thing seeing the Thunder Bagua animated. And I just love the voice actress that, that has been portraying her so far. So really cool stuff. Um, and uh, we also got a color page. It was so-so. Uh, um, I didn't like it as much as the last one. But it still is pretty cool seeing the monster tree on the front. Front and, front and center. So... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I had a lot of fun doing this, and uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to do it, because we're going to get a chapter next week, too. Four chapters in a row, which is kind of a record. Uh, so anyways, I'll see you guys till next time, and uh, have a good one.